All right, Paul. Hello there. How's things? Thanks for meeting me. I thought I'd invite you to the world's quietest, smallest pub quiz. Right, okay, so here's the thing, and I've kind of sprung this on you a little bit, I know. Right, I have this. That looks a lot like the Chase app. It is the Chase app, that you're the star of. I play this on the tube, and I've got it set up so that you are about to come up on the app. Oh, have you? And I thought, how weird would it be to have Paul Sinha playing Paul Sinha, the cinnamon, <laughs> on the Chase? Has that ever happened before? No. Have you ever played this app? Yes. Right, okay. Are you ready? I want to see how you do. Alright, okay. Who wins? I'll give you it a or go. the bot? Three, two, one, let's go. The reign of terror took place during which historical period? You've gone for the French Revolution before I could even read them. Okay. Fake Paul Sinha's got that right, and real Paul Sinha's got it right. Which Coronation Street character was played by Jean Alexander? And you've pressed Hilda Ogden. Fake Paul Sinha is looking down and then looking up. Yes, he's gone for Hilda Ogden, Ogden who, who, too. Who is this twat I'm playing? <laughs> he's as good as you are so far. Oh, Traditionally no, found no. in Western Ireland, what is a curragh? Boat. Boat, and you got it right. Oh. So did fake Paul Sinha. What did Hans Christian Andersen always travel with in case of fire? You've gone for rope. And you're correct. Fake Paul Sinha has got it wrong. Is that the first time you've ever played a quiz against a robot version of yourself? No, no, no. I'm far too self-obsessed for that to be the first time. I've played many times. <laughs> check, <laughs> check the form of the fake Paul Sinha, see how he's getting on. I see, so you're always feel like in a sci-fi movie. Yeah. It's um, such a kind of legendary quiz now, The Chase, isn't it? How long has it been on TV for? I mean, I joined in 2011. Mm. 2009, I think it started, and it's sort of just... It, it was a sleeper hit, and then the Fanny Schmeller moment happened. Here's your next question. In what sport does Fanny Schmeller compete for Germany? <laughs> yes. I'm Bradley corpsed over a, a, a German skier called Fanny Schmeller. Uh, and that just propelled the show into a, a totally different zone. The fans of The Chase were very angry when it was taken out of the schedules temporarily and replaced by Babushka, which was hosted by Rylan. What did you think of the show that replaced it? Did you understand why people were annoyed? Well, we have a very, very passionate fan base. Mm. They're very possessive of the show, but they've just got to lighten up and go, ITV are allowed to do whatever they like. We, you know, ITV are a massive TV channel, and they can make any decision they like. It's entirely up to them. We, they have to try other formats... Uh, from time to time, and Babushka was tried. It wasn't my thing. It just felt a bit like a very long, drawn-out episode of Deal or No Deal. Where most, of it, most of it was down to luck. I think what people um, need to understand when they commission game shows is no one's going to watch unless the audience care whether the contestants win or lose. A lot of people go on about how much money there is, but your average viewing public don't care about the money because it's not their life and it's not their friends and it's not their world. The chase is just as exciting when someone wins £100,000 as when someone wins £5,000. It's the contest, it's, 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 it's the victory. So Babushka then for you, is, it kind of lacked a bit of that quiz soul. Why do we want these people to win? Yeah. There, there, there was never any reason why you particularly want to. It was all just luck anyway. That's why Deal or No Deal does the sub stories. Right. Deal or No Deal trades on those sub stories because they want the audience to care whether the person who's the contestant for that day wins or loses. And I think that's what Bogusha is missing. The TV companies will constantly be changing and chopping and trying new stuff. But personally speaking, I don't think they've got... A lot of people haven't got quite the idea what makes a show good. One of the reasons why the people like The Chase is because there's lots and lots of questions. We get over 100 questions in, a, in an episode, usually. Well, that's why my mum likes it. Yeah, people who yeah. like The Chase, I like quizzes want to hear questions, they want to see a contest. But I think with the quiz show thing, you've got to get a balance between quiz show and game show. And interestingly, my, one of my favourite quiz shows is University Challenge. Its viewing figures have gone up and up and up and up. And the questions on there are really, really difficult. But people want to hear those questions, see how they do, have their moment of glory when they know one that the other team doesn't. But they also want to see a contest between four clever people against four clever people. There's no money involved, but it's, it's an intellectual contest. And that idea of the contest is what a lot of quiz shows miss. But what if that's alienating to people who aren't... But who it's clear that they're clever. But it's clear that it's not. That's the thing. I mean, believe me, a large part of the Chase fan base is not very clever. And yet the Chase is a clever show. 
it's still not just questions about Justin Bieber, it's questions about the French Revolution, 17th century philosophers, works of literature, works of art. There are all sorts of really highbrow questions dotted all over the show. It's a clever show, and people still watch it because they engage with, they don't care whether they know the answers or not, they're engaging with the dynamics of the contest. And that's the, that's the, you know, where, that's the key. You've got to care who wins, mm. I feel, and that, and that way you've got a successful win. I, lo- I love the fact you guys who are um, the chasers in that quiz can say things that are very, very blunt like that. You know, a lot of the viewers aren't very clever. <laughs> you can get well, very saying that because your persona is that you have to be kind of... You only have to read the, the things on the Chase timeline on Twitter every day. To really? Read, really? Like, yeah. <laughs> what, like? Do, oh, uh, there's, a, you know, anybody with any kind of physical imperfections is being pilloried. Uh, pe- people constantly think saying things like we got that question wrong or that fact's wrong and it's like no you didn't listen you didn't you, 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 right. didn't, you didn't listen to the question properly that, that, that fact is not wrong is that frustrating to you on twitter do you do you get trolled and and how do you deal with that i just ignore it now i think it's important to stay sane and realize that you can't get anywhere in entertainment without people not liking what you do and just stay sane and focused and try and ignore those people Obviously, on the, on the chase, there was a moment that happened recently that surprised a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you mentioned an ex-boyfriend. Were you surprised that it got such a reaction? That you basically came out to a new audience? Well, of I people? just assumed everybody knew. I've, I've been on the show for six years. In that time, I have made lots of references to being gay, but they haven't made. They've somehow mysteriously never made the edit. Uh, there was specifically, I was asked in the final chase. And this did make the edit. Uh, a few years ago, how many pieces are there to a bikini? And you couldn't ask a question that's more simple and more out of my comfort zone than that. <laughs> and I got it wrong, and I said one. And at the end, How two. did you get that wrong? I don't know. You don't have to tell me there's two. Of course there's two. There's the bra bit and the panty bit. Yeah, but I got it wrong. Bradley looked at me at the end and said, bikini? And I said, that question would fall to the only chase whose lifestyle choices mean he's never seen a bikini. That, <laughs> that was me coming out of the closet. But my Twitter profile had gay on it for years. So anybody who looked me up on Twitter could see that I was openly gay. I kept a very openly gay blog. I took a show to the Edinburgh Festival a few years ago about the fact that Jim Davis had referred to me as an Indian puff in a blog. In a, in a blog that it is, and so I called my blog. My blog was called Indian Puff for a while in, in honour of Jim Davis. He, he visited the comedy store once. and wrote a very vituperative blog about uh, what he thought of the uh, comedians on that night. And he, just, he, he referred to me, to me not by name, but just by the epithet Indian Puff. He's apologised since, but you know, I just thought, well, fuck it, I've never show out of it. Yeah, so that's kind of, um, it's a beautiful splicing, isn't it, of racism and homophobia? It's something quite, yeah, it's something beautifully efficient about it. Who, who'd think that of uh, Jim Davidson as well? Yeah. I mean, who, who would have guessed? There's almost a certain grace to it, isn't there? There's some way of telling from his entire life and career that he might have had bigoted views, then maybe I'd have <laughs> well, it must have come as quite a shock. Yeah, it really came as a shock. Did they cut, why did they keep cutting out of the programme, do you think? Did they not want it to become a thing for a while? But we have quite carefully stage-managed persona on the show, and perhaps they just didn't want it to be a thing. You know, the... Um, the little intros that we have at the beginning. Who's, who's it going to be today? Uh, perhaps the, they just didn't want it to be. Is it going to be the cinnamon? He likes cock. I don't. You know. I don't know. Perhaps <laughs> well, they just didn't want to do this kind of camp. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't want it to be that way. Flurry. I don't know. I, I, I try not to play my life as a victim and try and own things. If someone's um, being nasty to me, I will fight back. So you have Indian heritage, and because you're homosexual, are those two things? Um, uh, have those two things been an issue for you? Not especially. Um, when you came out first, for instance, was that something? Well, that you know, there was parental disappointment, but no, no, dif- no different, I think, to a lot of parents who want the best for their son and realise that being gay comes with a bit of baggage that may, might make your life less easy. So it wasn't a religious disappointment? Certainly not. No, my parents, although they're Hindus, are not what we'd call conservative Hindus, don't live their life by particularly religious values, no. Have you ever suffered, apart from Jim Davidson writing a review of your set, but have you ever suffered um, homophobia? Scattered here and there. Sometimes you know you can see blokes and audiences just stop listening to you because they're disgusted with what you're saying. Um, I remember being in a queue for a gay pub in London back in the early 90s when we were actually attacked by a, a bunch of yobs and we 
the staff just let us into the club and shut the door on them. So I, don't, I don't think that means anything. I certainly wouldn't have put down anyone else's experience. But I've been really lucky. That said, you know, I've, I've, I've known people who've been far less lucky in my life, but I've been really lucky. Let me ask the same question then about um, uh, your, your ethnicity and whether that has led to any nasty comments, particularly in light of what's been happening recently. As, as a very kind of intelligent and thoughtful man, I thought, well, what's your response to the recent attacks and the upsurge that I've seen online of racism? Well, there's an upsurge of everything online. Twitter gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's a home for, it's, it's a home for everybody. Twitter and Facebook. It's, it, it's, it's the refuge for anybody who's frustrated and wants to voice their opinion and wants to be heard, and they can imagine that they are being heard by the 11 people who follow them or, or whatever. And I try not to take it seriously. I thought you just get consumed with depression. If you just, if you, you know, it didn't used to be that you'd hear the voices of the true, you'd hear the voices of the truly angry, fearful, and bigoted. But with social media, all you've got to do is search a keyword, uh, and you'll and you'll find those voices. You know, yesterday we had the attack on uh, on Sunday night in Finsbury Park, and it only takes about two or three clicks to find the voices of people that absolutely supported the attack on uh, on, on Finsbury Park and were hailing the guy as a hero. And these people exist; we know they exist. But because of social media, they all have a voice. And it's important to realise that just because they have a voice doesn't mean their voice is important. And something that I've realised increasingly over the years, over the last few years, is that social media gives us a very distorted and extreme view of what people in the outside world are, th are actually thinking. Because Twitter and social media tell us what people who are desperate to let the world know their opinion mm. are thinking. I know that I look through life through daytime celebrity glasses and that um, the world that I see is not necessarily the world that other people see because there's a, a default positivity towards me because I'm the guy on the telly mm. and that gives me a head start on other openly gay Asian men in society but I would say that in my dealings with the general public it seems to me that homophobia is on the way not on the increase and this is just anecdotal and it is just about what I, I experience going through life but I think that, um, in general, naturally homophobic people are of the, well, as long as you don't stick it down my throat, so to speak, uh, I don't really care what you do behind closed doors. After that, after that story came out, um, revelation, Paul is gay, um, did, you, did you get some trolls? Did you get... No. Nothing. Genuinely. And I'm someone that... So that's good. And I'm genuinely somebody that looks, searches for my name misspellings of my name <laughs> really yeah, yeah. I love so honest about the that the Cineman the Cineman S-I-N-N-A the Cineman S-I-N-N-E-R normally people are like no I never read no 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 I, mean, I try to use it as an exercise to steal myself against people that, you don't, that don't like you I think it's quite good to get to, to become stronger by seeing what complete strangers are saying about you of course there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are on Twitter right now who absolutely loathe everything that gay people stand for and so if they're shouting in your ear on Twitter, try and remember the, the thousands and thousands of people who don't have a problem with you, your sexuality at all. Something that I find very uneasy is the fact that uh, the gays, are come, the, the more visibility of the gays, the more possibility there is that they're becoming a terrorist target with the values that, with the values that ISIS represent. And it wouldn't, be, it, wouldn't be unheard, it wouldn't be the biggest shock in the world if a gay venue or a gay event or a gay this or gay that was targeted by terrorists. And in the, if that should happen, I would not want the debate to be people have a problem with gays. Lots of people don't have a problem with gays, but ISIS have a problem with everybody. I, I would implore everybody to be more alert uh, about the about the world around them and look out for any suspicious behaviour. What do you look for, though? I mean, I'm not just anybody behaving in a slightly suspicious manner. But what is a suspicious manner at a pride event? Um, it, well, know, there might be some particularly clumsy people who um, go down the route of racial profiling. If you're walking through the rucksack, you might find yourself well, caught up in that. Pool. Yeah, of course. And do you know what? If anyone wants to search my bag, do so. I, I've got no problem with it. I, I am an Asian man who wanders around large cities with a bag over his shoulder all the time. 
And if anyone wants to stop, if anyone wants to stop me for a routine search, I'll be more than happy to be stopped for a routine search. But I think we need to be, we need to be alert. Are you seriously being contrary, though? I, I'd say the same thing back in 2005 when we had the London bombings, and I was stopped a lot, and it was always done politely, and it was always it was like I'm really sorry about this, you know, really sorry about that. We just want to do a routine check of your bags. It was always done politely and with that, with a minimum of fuss, and I always cooperated. And you I didn't feel that they were doing that because of your ethnicity, and therefore isn't that racist? Isn't that then part of the problem that ISIS and other terrorist groups I've are trying to I've got to be realistic create? about the fact that I'm a 40-something man who travels around the country with a bag over his shoulders. But as long as people do things in a polite way, then we should cooperate with people who are trying to make the world a safer place. It's interesting to hear you say that, because I suppose there's a lot of kind of white middle class apologists who would get very offended on your behalf. When I was offended when I was doing a cruise, when I was doing a cruise ship in uh, a couple of months ago in Spain, uh, and when I got on, I got off the bus to go to the airport. The taxi driver stopped at a police station to get the, to get a Spanish policeman to check my details. I was offended by that because that was not his. That was abs- and the policeman, to his credit, was absolutely baffled. So that was just a member of the public deciding that you might be a threat. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Is that something you ever talk about? Yeah, I'm I'm taking a show up to the Edinburgh Festival. It's called Shout Out to My Ex. It's about turning up to the Edinburgh Festival two years ago with a show about how happy I was that all the pieces of the jigsaw had finally fallen into place and then returning back to London and being dumped within two days. That's, uh, that's the gay experience. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds about uh, right. Yeah, I've been through some that. And that's the tag on how I hung, I hung hang the stories of what's happened to me in the last two years. What's happened to you the last two years is you've met someone else in the world of quizzing. We are the power couple of quizzing. Oh. We, um, we're, we're both regular finishers in the top ten in national, national UK tournaments. Okay. Um, and who's better at quizzes? Me, but not by a lot. It's quite scary how quickly he's catching up. Uh, you and Oliver have been together for how long? Since July last year. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so almost a year. Al- almost a year. I mean, he wouldn't know. He's not the, he's not the sort of romantic person that, 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 that would remember exactly when it happened. But, yeah, since July last year. Are, are you a gay guy that hopes for kids? Or will you just get a French bulldog? Or um, do you think you'll just be in short-term relationships your whole life? Or do you want to fall in love and get married? What's What, what does Paul Sinha want? That's a very good question. And actually, I've got some clear-cut answers. Uh, pets, no. Kids, no. Don't think my life is conducive to that level of responsibility. Good luck to anybody that wants kids, but it's just not for me. And I need, I've known that for a long, long time. Luckily, the boyfriend feels exactly the same way. Married, not for me. I don't think I could put my parents through <laughs> the rigmarole of a gay marriage. I think my parents have been so amazing and so great and so supportive. When I told them that I'd found a boyfriend, they were just like, oh, thank you. Thank, thank, thank the Lord for that. You, you. I'm perfectly happy with a boyfriend. I'm passionately pro gay marriage, um, passionately, to the point that I just can't understand the alternative point of view. But it's not for everybody. And uh, monogamy? Well, that's an interesting question. We're in, an, we're in an open relationship, but I can't really say any more than that. But it is still a conversation you have to have with a new partner, isn't it? Oh, very much so. Do you want to be monogamous, or actually, is that not really going to work for you? Yeah, absolutely. Can we be honest? Spirit, spirit of honesty in the relationship. But I think that the, one of the advantages to being gay, if you can call it an advantage, is there is no traditional template for how you're meant to, how you're meant to in, engage with your partner. Because heterosexual relationships are supposedly based on the idea of procreation and, and, and providing a loving environment for your children, and therefore, by definition, mon, mon, monogamy. There is no template. You, 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 you can create your own template of what works for you. Tell people, um, do you know where your show's going to be and when it's going to be? You have oh, the yeah. dates in your venue, the, so yeah, tell people. The whole of August at the Stand Comedy Club. I think not, not August 14th, I think that's my, not, not my night off. But 4.55pm at the Stand One Comedy Club in Edinburgh. It's called Shout Out to My Ex. And it's essentially the story of the last two years of my life. It started with me... Being dumped in the, in the, I won't give anything away, but in the most unexpected manner imaginable. Can you not give something away? I'll tell you after. Tell what me after the camera is switched off because I need to know. I've been dumped in so many hilarious ways. I love hearing other people's stories. Listen, it's been really nice talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.